Hey everybody and brightest blessings. Lady Leanna here once again with another edition of Tarot Card Lessons Made Easy. And it is absolutely great to be back here talking to you once again about the tarot cards. I really love this subject. I really love going over these cards. It actually jogs my own memory and, you know, helps me to remember that I need to reflect and do the cards more because things shift and change within the cards every time you look at them. You know, I mean, really look at them. Something else within them takes shape or form. And I mean, I've been reading the cards for over 32 years, so that's saying a lot, you know. But uh, today we'll be covering the Nine of Swords. Alright, and if you don't actually have your cards, then you can follow along via the rather large card that I will be placing before you like this throughout the entire video. If you have a deck of your own and it is different from mine, I do highly suggest that you look at your own cards so that you can coincide the meanings I give you along with the look of your own cards. I feel that that's very, very important that while you're learning the card's meaning, no matter what source you get the meaning from, that you be looking at your own cards because it's very good to find a synonymity between the look of the card and the meaning. It helps you to remember a lot deeper and um, you see a lot of great things in there. I mean, you really do. And every deck has its beauty, trust me. The Nine of Swords, all right? And um, we're going to go over all the symbols and then the reversed and upright position thereafter. So the symbols within the cards are the entire wall back behind the fellow or short-haired lady within the card. The entire wall is black. Now, anytime within the tarot cards you see black, a lot of black, it means that the meaning of the cards in the upright position are going to be dark. It's just the way it is. There is no happiness, joy, or contentment within the black that is within the darkest of the tarot cards. And trust me, you'll know which ones I'm talking about when you see it. Another one would be your... Ten of Swords, which we'll cover on the next video. Okay, the black within the cards is just as dark, as gloomy, as negative, and distressing as you would think it is. So that's the first thing I want to call your attention to within the cards, is the black wall that is from ceiling to floor within the tarot cards. Then you have a streaming down of swords making kind of a cage look behind him and that's very very important as you'll find when we start going over the meaning in the cards now the swords themselves are a tool of logic are looked at as air within the tarot cards although uh, within Wicca and paganism generally would be a representation of fire but air is the symbology you would go with in this particular card. And typically when you're talking about the air symbols in the tarot cards, you're looking at communication, you're looking at magic, you're looking at uh, logic and wisdom. That's what you're supposed to be con concentrating on as far as that is concerned. Logic and wisdom, communication and magic for the most part. Strength is also represented by the swords, by the way. But they stream down in a cage-type fashion and can hold a certain meaning toward self-imprisonment or actual imprisonment for that matter. We'll go into that more here in a minute. But the person within the card is whether a male or short-haired female old or young, it doesn't matter. The hands are hiding the face and so you really wouldn't know by looking at it anyway. Alright? But uh, the person is obviously very depressed in, in stress and uh, grieving or 
degradated, ashamed, hands over the face, and the tarot cards can represent shame a great deal of the time. The person is alone and so outcasted or have casted themselves out away from other people. But now let's look at what he's sleeping on. It would seem at first glance to be a bed. I didn't think of it till much later, but when you really look at it, having engravings all up and down it, and it kind of insets, it looks like a coffin to me. It really looks more like a coffin. And in the oldest days, they had more uh, removable lids than hinged ones. So, quite, quite possible that he's resting on a coffin. He's covered in a patchwork quilt. Now, the patchwork within a quilt in the cards would represent many different shapes, forms, or designs. Differences within anything. Sometimes liveliness, okay? But, uh, you know, whenever it, I guess, uh, conflicts with the darkness inside the card, then, you know, it could really give a lot of contrasting meanings. We'll cover that here in a minute likewise. I didn't really talk much about the coffin itself, but the coffins within the tarot cards generally represent um, aspects of death, but not necessarily physical death. It can mean the death of concepts and ideas, uh, getting rid of the old to take on new within yourself, whether it's the way you act or what you're striving for, new beginnings, fresh starts, because death don't always mean the ending of things, but also can mean a rebeginning or rebirth, okay? We'll talk about that more here in a minute. But you have a person dressed in white, which is representative of purity. And again, white within the cards, meaning purity, can also represent rebirth or birth. Alright, so here, it, it has some contrasting ideas. Basically, the card can mean death of someone close to you, but not usually would the Nine of Swords represent your own death? Ruin, pain, affliction, tears can mean death of a loved one, death of ideas, concepts, a relationship, the ending of a job, okay, patchwork quilt. Well, typically it would give contrast to the death idea because it's covering you as you're laying in a coffin but it would basically mean not your own death, all right? And that there are things that are ending, but there can be positivity that would come thereafter. And that it, it reminds you that death isn't always the end, but maybe uh, a means toward a new beginning. And sometimes you have to cut off from the past or kill off the past so that you can take on new ideas, concepts, start fresh and over them. All right? The card holds ideas of imprisonment. It can mean someone going to jail. Notice the shame of the person. And, and there you're looking at the bars that the swords make going down the wall along with the shame that the person is showing by covering their face. So actual imprisonment, someone going to jail, can also mean in regard to the patchwork quilt and the contrast of the going to jail, it, you know, the joy or the contentment that's showing in the quilt itself and then the degradation and shame of the swords making the imprisonment. It could mean that someone goes to jail or imprisonment and because they've been so bad to you or draining on you or causing you so much grief and not straightening out that it's a relief to you that they're going, you know. And really, sometimes 
that which is better for us or even for the person that's going to jail would seem pretty grim at the time. Death of someone close to you. It's showing run pain, affliction, tears can mean death of a loved one. That would be a lover, a mate, consort, or a family member, a friend. But it would have to be somebody important for it to afflict you in the way that it does within the card. So self-spokenly. It can also mean, because it's um, you laying within a coffin, it could mean that you're in an illness state that could take you all the way to the brink of death at which you come back from. So in that regard, it can mean uh, like heading toward death for you, but a rebounding and coming back. And that is the contrast yet once again between you laying in the coffin and yet being covered by a lively looking patchwork quilt. The flower within the quilt is red, red meaning blood, which would mean of dire consequence or great importance to you within the cards. Also liveliness. The yellow is joy and contentment within the patchwork quilt and blue is peace and tranquility, which kind of validates what I was saying about somebody going to jail and it giving you a sense of peace because now you can get on with your life. They'll be learning a lesson of life that they really drastically need. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there, you know, if they are indeed guilty. Okay. Now, also, it could mean if they're not guilty that someone would go to jail, but it would be proven uh, really quickly that they were innocent and then they would be released. And that would be, again, the contrast between the colorful quilt and the bars on the back wall. But shame, shame could be something that you would do within the love relationship that you're embarking on. Something that you would do that would go against the relationship at all and then run it for you because in the end it would be a breakup. The death of your relationship is revealed here even more so than the death of yourself because like I said if it was reflecting on the death of yourself it would be you getting near the brink of death but coming back up back into life rebounding from it and coming back into the good so you know all right so the death of a love relationship but brought on by your own shame something that you have done to shame yourself within that relationship and kill it off yourself. Can be if also the card, a male or female, representing your other half, comes up crossing it or coupling with it, it could also mean that your other half has shamed themselves by doing something that goes against your relationship and ending it. So it depends again also here what goes on around the card in the spread. And when I do this, I'm reflecting on the Celtic cross method that I typically use. It could be, you know, the Tree of Life method or the astrological method if you use those instead, or just a simple uh, cross spread. All right, so, run pain, affliction, tears. Afflicted by something that would be illness or by your own shame or the shame that someone has done, uh, someone is treating you. Feeling self-imprisoned, holding yourself up in a room, not venturing out, becoming a prisoner to your own bed over your illness, which I've already briefly talked about, but it could be a person paralyzed or uh, in such a bad state, although maybe not near death, they're l under bed arrest basically due to their illness, um, self-imprisoned or imprisoned by a lover that won't let them get out. And it could be a card of someone who is afflicted by abuse. Okay, so 
There is a great deal of meaning in everything that I've given you and that's a lot for you to con contemplate. So really, you should reflect into the card more because there's a lot more in there. This is a very, very deep card. Okay? Now, in the upside down position, it is the total reverse position. That means it will more or less turn a lot of things around. He'll recuperate everything that's been said. Somebody coming out of an illness rather quickly. Someone breaking out of a bad relationship that could be abusive or just very depressing for them. Someone coming up out of depression and back into life. Celebration of things. Someone being released from imprisonment. There could be uh, like a problem within work and it shows it being fixed. Maybe you've done something in degradation towards your co-employees or uh, that you're ashamed of that your boss has found out about but it will be fixed and you will rebound from this problem. Also, in the fact that the card itself is a nine, all right, the nine of swords, and in the reverse position, it is a six. It is the complete turnaround of things. And uh, that's whether it's in the upright position or the upside down position. Which means if you get this card in the upside down position, it can likewise mean that you were recuperating from a bad illness and coming back. Maybe even were recuperating from the potentiality of a death from illness, but will relapse and go back into it. So this could be a card of those who would have cancer or stroke or heart attack problems in the past who were in remission or were doing good from it but will have a relapse from it. This isn't a card that I'm particular, uh, particularly happy in covering right now since just three days ago I found out about myself having cancer. So it makes it very hard for me to want to cover this particular card right at the moment, but it just so happened to be the card I would have to cover next since I'm going in order of the cards and sticking to a suit once I start one. But the card can be very, very negative in the upright or upside down position. It could likewise be positive on a minor scale in the upright position, but very positive on most cases in the upside down position. Use your own imagination. Someone that was imprisoned whenever the card's in the upside down position, but is now being released. Breaking out, getting away from your own depression, getting out from out outside your house when you have been under self-lockdown for a long time, re-embarking on love, although you may not have allowed yourself to get involved with anyone for a long time. Um, maybe getting back an old love and trying to make it work once more when you had ended the relationship at one time. Let's see, overturning the darkness for the positive. Resurrection of old ideas. Okay can be a pretty positive card. It does mean that somebody could relapse back into an illness, like I said, you know, if they do not take care of themselves. Or they can come out of remission if they had cancer previously, uh, meaning the cancer kicked back into high gear and caused a problem for them, taking them potentially all the way into death. If the card is talking about uh, you or someone close to you. Anyway, I feel that I've covered this card to the greatest degree that I possibly can. It has a lot of deep meaning to it and I suggest you leave your card out and study it for the next 20 minutes or more after we finish this video, alright? 
Well, you take care of yourself, and I'm glad to be able to help wherever possible, so don't be afraid to ask questions. I noticed that a lot of people are not very active and speaking on this channel whatsoever. You know, it would be helpful if you would liven up a little bit, and really if you want to, you know, liven up a little bit, talk you know, among yourselves in the panel below the video about the cards. Give your ideas of what this card could potentially mean so other people could maybe take from it, you know. But also, by any means, if you would share the video around on all your social networks, then I would be truly grateful and helpful. It would help the channel to grow a lot more. And we really do need to stir things up on this particular channel, that's for sure. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you will to get the channel pumped up, alright? Take care of yourself and brightest blessings.